All right, before we get started clicoing this frame together, I just wanted to show you in the plans, this wire right here is the elevator trim cable. And the holes are not drilled in the spar. I've drilled that hole and I've drilled this hole in the ribs. You'll need to drill those holes in order to route your cable from the servo, which is about right here, through the spar, up and over through that rib, and then from here it goes down to the center of the airplane. I wanted to show you what I'm using though. The plans call for a rubber grommet to go in here, and what I've decided to use instead are these little plastic grommets or snap rings. I don't know exactly what they're called, but I like them better than rubber grommets because in 10 years from now, I don't have to worry about that rubber grommet drying out and cracking. And once you drill the right size hole, these things just snap right in. Obviously all my parts are prepped and primed and it's ready to clico it together, which is always the fun part of building an assembly like this. Here is the completed skeleton. It is ready for riveting and it's ready for the skins. It's not shown here, but I added a large zip tie to the end of this cable to keep it from pulling back out of the hole. I've done a few steps in a row here, so I'm going back into the manual and putting a check mark on the steps that I've already completed. Because the next steps in the build process will be to lay the skins on the workbench and slide them over the skeleton. I just wanted to make sure there was no metal shavings or metal chips or anything on the workbench to scratch the skin. So I just took a little bit of time here to clean it off. Now that I'm ready for the skins, that's just one more part that I can take off the shelf and get rid of. Do be a little bit careful while you're removing this paper because if you just grab the paper and start ripping and tearing, it is possible to bend these skins. I went through and very, very lightly deburred some of the holes that needed deburred. I found that most of these skins do have sort of a rough edge from the machine cutting them out. And I like to have a really, really smooth edge where you could run your fingers over the edge of the aluminum and it won't be sharp or rough at all. So I went through with just a piece of 400 grit sandpaper and just sanded smooth all of the edges of the skins. After I've sanded the skin's edge smooth and deburred the holes, I just like to blow off the whole workbench just so there's no little metal shavings or aluminum dust anywhere to scratch the surface of the skin. 
Fitting the skins over the skeleton was kind of a fun part, pretty easy to do, but it's the first time you kind of get to see what a completed elevator will look like. I wanted to make my elevator trim servo cover removable, so I'm using 632 nut plates instead of rivets to hold it on. So that just means I need to put some, drill some holes for some nut plates here. And the way they do, I do that is I just put a screw up through the bottom, screw a nut plate onto it, not all the way, but just a few threads. And that positions the nut plate. I can press it down just on a block of wood so I'm drilling into something solid and I drill the holes for the nut plate. Just like the other skin, I am priming where the ribs touch the skin, and that's it. Once the primer is dry, I can now put the skin over the skeleton and clico it together. Now when I got to the center part of the elevator, there were some holes that weren't lining up. So I I figured something was wrong because they lined up before when I clicked it together before I primed. Well, it turns out this piece right here, I riveted in backwards. I didn't know that there's a certain direction that this piece goes on. The plans don't really specify it or the instructions, so you really have to be careful that these holes in the center line up with the holes in the front spar. So I have a 12 inch drill bit here that I use to drill out six rivets so that I could flip this piece around. When I put this piece on the first time, I never even realized that the holes are off center. So this is where, you know, mistakes can happen. Luckily, this one was easy to fix. I just had to drill out some rivets and flip it around. Well, I flipped it 180 degrees, it's ready to rivet back on, and now the three holes in this little aft spar line up with the holes in the front spar. With that little surgery complete, it's now time to add the right side elevator skin. And just like the left side, you can see I've primed the where the metal overlaps, basically where the rivets go. I'm not priming the entire skin. It's just a matter of slipping it on the same way I did the left side. Adding the leading edge skin to the elevators is really just the same as the horizontal stabilizer. If you watched that video, it gets clicoed and riveted to one side, then you flip the elevator over, and I'll use a piece of wood to bend over the top edge, which would actually be the bottom edge of the elevator. Now the way the elevator is built is it's sitting with the top side up and I have a piece of wood on it just to kind of hold it down flush against the workbench. And one side will get riveted completely, which is the top side here. So when all of the rivets are on the top side, I can then flip the elevator over, basically make it upside down, and then I can use the piece of wood to bend over the leading edges just again like the horizontal stabilizer was built. But the idea here is to completely rivet one side so that there's no clicos, and that's what lets me flip it over and lay it flush on the workbench.
After riveting the bottom, I flipped it over and sorry I didn't film it, but Brian and I used a two by four to bend over these leading edge skins and they're now all riveted on. I really didn't plan on doing it yesterday, but Brian was over here in the hangar and while we were standing around talking, I said, hey, hold the elevator so I can bend these over. But I do wanna show you, I just have this last piece to put on yet. And I just wanted to show you that because the skins overlap, I primed it there. Again, I'm not real paranoid about primer, but I just figured since it's, you know, on the outside of the airplane and water might get trapped under there, it might be a good idea to have that primed. So anyway, the next step is just to rivet this on. And then other than the brackets that go in the center here, this elevator will be complete. The edges of these elevator control cable brackets are smooth, but they're, the edge is just a little bit uneven and wavy. So I'm using the Scotch-Brite wheel on the grinder here just to even that out and make it real smooth and shiny and nice and perfect. what these center brackets look like. This is obviously where the elevator control cable will attach. This one here goes on the bottom. So there's an L angle on the back, a bracket on the top, another L angle on the front. And like I just said, this one goes on the bottom. I haven't riveted these on yet because I'm thinking I may want to paint all of these separate and then rivet it on after painting. And the only reason why is just I'm trying to think of how I'm going to get the paint gun in and around here to paint in inside here and inside here. It just might be easier to do without these on, or it might not be. I just have to look at it and kind of let my brain figure it out. But for now, they're not riveted on. If I do decide to rivet them, then I'll prime the bottom of this, prime the top surface of this, rivet them all together, and then this will be completely done. If not, like I said, then I'll just paint everything separate. Once it's all painted, I can easily just rivet it on after paint. Also thinking ahead, I wanted to mention something about the elevator trim servo that goes in here and then the arm comes out of here. I've seen a lot of people that during their build, they'll rivet in the servo, put the arm out here, connect it to the trim tab. Oh, and by the way, my trim tab is on back order right now. That's why I don't have it on here. But then, you know, when it comes time to paint, they have to paint the control arm coming out of there because everything's already all assembled and they don't think that looks good. You'll notice on my cruiser that the control arm and the clevis and everything is not painted. And that's because I waited until after all the painting was done to then put in the servo and run the arm. It's certainly easy to do after it's painted. And I just think it looks way better than having this part painted, which really shouldn't be painted. So always think ahead when you're building your airplane and you may find parts that you wanna wait until after paint or after assembly to actually do. 